Kia ora Year 12. This is the starter that I did in class today and a number of you were out isolating or with COVID so I thought I would YouTube it. I also think this is a good revision video for everyone to have a look at in the lead up to um, derived grade exams in Term 3. So we've got a bunch of functions here and they all look kind of the same but some of them are going to be ones where if we slow down a little bit first we can um, not have to do too much work. So the question here is which ones are going to need the product rule and which ones won't. So I want you to pause the video and just go through thinking about that. Don't actually do the differentiation, but just do the cleaning up that you might want to do first. Okay, so starting from number one, we've got f of x is equal to this. And you can see that we've got one thing in the denominator. That means that I can simplify this fraction nicely by dividing through by this x to the power of a half term here. And we get 7 x to the power of a half minus x to the power of negative a half. And then that's going to be very easy to differentiate. So actually I'm going to do the differentiation now. So f dash of x will now be 7 over 2 x to the negative a half plus 1 half x to the negative 3 over 2. And that's just using my basic rule of bring down the power and then drop it by 1. There's no chain rule involved in that one. Okay, let's look at the next one, g of x. So I've got 2 root x times this thing here. So this can be easily expanded. I don't need to use the product rule. Even though when you first look at it, you might see that here I've got one um, expression in x, and here I've got another one. So I have got a product, but I'm going to change it back into just a bunch of terms added together. So we get 6 x to the power of um, 2 plus a half, which is 5 over 2, minus 2x to the power of 3 over 2, plus 10x to the power of a half. Differentiating that is going to give me 15x to the 3 over 2, minus 3x to the 1 half, plus 5x to the negative a half. Okay, so that's the second one done. The third one is similar. We just need to work with our fractional powers first. So h of x can be converted into 7x to the negative 2 thirds, giving me h dash of x is negative 14 over 3 times x to the negative 5 thirds. So that's that one done. Okay, uh, let's see where we're up to. So f of x, again, because I was just starting to run out of letters, uh, we can write that with a negative power. Uh, today we learnt the quotient rule. There is no reason to do the quotient rule here. We've got a constant term in the numerator, and then we've got a thing down here. So we can rewrite this simply as f of x is equal to 3 times 5x minus 6 to the power of negative 1 half. That gives me f dash of x is equal to 3 times negative 1 half times 5x minus 6 to the negative 3 over 2 times 5. So this time I am using the chain rule, right? This is my inside function, and this is my outside function. If you want to do that more slowly, you could write it out as f of x is equal to 3u to the negative a half, and go from there. But I'm hoping that by this stage, because you guys have done this already in AES last year, you're pretty confident just going directly to that, thinking about the inside and the outside function. Now the next one is one where we finally do need to use the product rule, right? Because we've got this, but it's times this fractional power thing. And the only way we can expand that is to do our gross, well, beautiful but gross binomial expansion on that term. So finally, we get to a product rule question. So let's see how it's going to go. Well, even though I'm not going to do the expansion, I am going to turn it into a fractional powers thing. Now you can think of this as u and this as v. So this one I am going to write out slowly because I think lots of you are probably still writing the u and v parts out manually for these. So du by dx is equal to 12x cubed and dv by dx will equal 2 thirds times this times the derivative of the inside function, which is just negative 2. So that gives me negative 4 thirds times 1 minus 2x to the negative 1 third. 
So to differentiate this, I'm going to have f dash of x is equal to u times dv by dx plus v times du by dx. So it's this one times this plus this one times this. Right, don't hang up the video, I haven't done the last question yet. So this equals 3x to the power of 4 times negative 4 thirds. Oh, the one note's gone weird. Okay, something strange just happened, sorry about that. So f dash of x is equal to 3x to the power of 4 times negative 4 thirds times this plus 1 minus 2x to the power of 2 thirds times 12x cubed. Now you could leave it like that, but that just looks horrible to me. So let's clean it up a bit. We get negative 12x to the power of 4 times 1 minus 2x to the negative 1 third plus 12x cubed to the power of 1 minus 2x to the power of 2 thirds. Now, I think that's a pretty nice first answer. One thing you'll notice in the Cambridge textbook is that they're really obsessed with factorizing out um, as much as they can, right? So in this case, what we can factor out is, uh, I'm going to do this term first. So I'm going to factor out 12x cubed. And then I'm going to factorize out this negative power. So this is quite a nice exercise in algebra. Um, in here, that means that I've got this is correct, this is correct, and I need to times by 1 minus 2x to the power of 1. And then here, I'm going to have minus, the 12 is done, and I need to have just x here. So we, we can write this like this. Now, I didn't actually get to do this in class today, but hopefully a few of you are watching. So that's kind of the final best factorized answer for that question there. Um, but I'm quite happy if you stop there. I don't really like you stopping there, but for NCA, that's enough to get a tick. But, you know, it's still gross. At least simplify the threes here. In fact, I, I think you'd have to do that even, even for an achieved question. Okay, last question. Now, this one is one where there are three ways to do it. The first way is with simplifying a wee bit. The second way is with the product rule. And the third way is with the quotient rule, which is the other thing that we learned today. The first thing that we notice when we've got this rational expression is that we've got a 3x here and we've got a 6x here. So we could rewrite this as g of x is equal to 3x minus 5 here. And 6x is equal to 2 times 3x. And I'm going to match up this term down here. So that now gives me in the top line, numerator, 6x minus 10. So I forced in a minus 10, so I add it back in again. And that means that I can write g of x as 2 plus 17 times 3x minus 5 to the negative 1. And that's really easy to differentiate. It's just going to be negative 17 times 3x minus 5 to the negative 1, oh, sorry, to the negative 2 times the derivative of the inside function, which is 3. So that cleans up to give me negative 51 times 3x minus 5 to the negative 2. So that's g dash of x. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The next way to do it is using the product rule. So this time we'll write it as g of x is equal to 6x plus 7 times 3x minus 5 to the negative 1. This is my u and this is my v. So g dash of x is going to be the first of the two factors. So 6x plus 7 times the derivative of this. So times negative 1. times 3 for the inside function, plus the other way around, v, 3x minus 5 to the negative 1, 
times the derivative of u, which is just 6. And if we clean that up, we get negative 3 times 6x plus 7 over 3x minus 5 squared plus 6 over 3x minus 5. And we can see they don't look the same, but I'm going to show you now that they are the same. If we put them back together, so that's a big tick for that one there, put them back together and we're going to have a common denominator of 3x minus 5 squared. So here we're going to multiply that 6 by this, right? So that's just doing equivalent fractions. And you can see that we get negative 18x minus 21 plus 18x minus 30 over 3x minus 5 squared, which equals negative 51 over 3x minus 5 squared, which is the same thing. Okay, um, thanks for watching. If you've made it all the way through to 11 minutes, well done. I'm going to do a couple more videos later on today. One's going to go through the quotient rule, and one's going to go through how to differentiate the natural log function. Um, if you've got any questions, guys, especially if you've been at home isolating, just send me an email.